Today I will talk about logistic regression. It is part of my series of lectures on machine learning. This is my lecture outline. First I will give introduction to regression. Then I will talk about mathematical basis of logistic regression. Then I will talk about coefficient estimation and interpretation of coefficients of logistic regression. Then I will enumerate types of logistic regression. Then I will talk about assumptions of logistic regression. Then problems and then model performance and model diagnostics. Then I'll talk about in brief sample size consideration for logistic regression and then I'll give an example with Python code of logistic regression. So regression techniques are of two types, linear regression and logistic regression. Advantages of regression techniques include regression techniques can measure association, they can predict outcome, they can control for confounding variable. Consider a situation of binary outcome variable Y and either numerical or binary input variables X, J. So input variables or independent variables may be either numerical or binary. If they are like uh, more than two classes, then there should be one hot encoding. Then y is either 0 or 1. Oss ratio for y is equal to 1 is given by probability of y is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus probability of y is equal to 1. Then logarithm of odds ratio is given as this entity. The quantity which is known as logit. So this logarithm of odds ratio is known as logit. And range of logit is from 0 to infinity. Hence we can regress logit with variables x, j or independent variables. So this is odds ratio. This is log of odds ratio. And we regress the logs of odds ratio or logit with the independent variables. So this is our logistic regression model. And the predicted probability is given by this equation. Then coefficient estimation and interpretation. For coefficient estimation, we calculate log likelihood. Log likelihood, this is the likelihood equation and this is log likelihood equation. The solution involves taking the first derivative of log likelihood with respect to each of the coefficients, setting them to zero and solving the simultaneous equation. The maximum likelihood estimate is a likelihood maximization method, whereas ordinary least square regression is a distance minimizing approximation method. Maximizing the likelihood function determine the parameters that are most likely to produce the observed data. So this we do in logistic regression, whereas OLS is done in linear regression. MLE assumes a joint probability mass function, whereas OLS doesn't require any stochastic assumption for minimizing distance. The coefficient gives slope of regression line. That is how much outcome variable increase for one unit increase in independent variable. Since the logits are log odds ratio, so odds ratio can be calculated as exponential of coefficient. Types of logistic regression. First of all, binary logistic regression. This is the usual type of logistic regression. The target variable has only two possible outcomes, such as spam or not spam, cancer or no cancer. Then multinomial logistic regression, the target variable has three or more nominal categories, such as predicting the type of wine. Then ordinal logistic regression, the target variable has three or more ordinal categories, such as restaurant or product rating from one to five. So these are types of logistic regression. Then assumptions of logistic regression, these are assumptions, these are very important. First is independence, that is the observation should be independent of each other. Then linearity, logits should be linearly related to continuous independent variables. Then non-additivity, no interaction effect is ignored. We should include all the interaction effects in our model. Then there should be no multicollinearity. Then there should be no zero cell count. That is, if there is there are levels of independent variable for which dependent variable does not vary at all. So thus a situation should not be there. There should not be complete or quasi-complete separation. There should not be over or under dispersion. 
there should not be presence of outliers and there should not be presence of influential observations and there should be independence of errors or residuals. Then problems, certain problems include that logistic regression is not able to handle a large number of categorical features or variables. It is vulnerable to overfitting. Also, we can't solve the long linear problem with the logistic regression. That is why it requires a transformation of non-linear features. Logistic regression will not perform well with independent variables that are not correlated to the target variable. And when independent variables are very similar or correlated to each other, this is known as multicollinearity problem. Then basic calculations. So these are certain basic calculations. First is log likelihood. It is defined as this. Uh, then this is deviance or residual. It is defined as the known outcome minus predicted probability. Then standardized residual or Pearson's residual is defined as this usual residual divided by square root of predicted probability multiplied by 1 minus predicted probability. Then studentized Pearson residual is defined as this entity. Then uh, deviance residual is defined as this and residual deviance is defined as summation of square of these deviance residual. Then leverage or hat value, this can be uh, obtained by using this matrix operation where the W n by n matrix is a diagonal matrix with estimated probabilities and uh, the diagonal values, the hat values, if they are more than 2 P by n, it means they are large or there is a leverage effect. Then model performance. So there is no R square unlike linear regression. So model fitness is calculated through either concordance or KS statistics. There are certain uh, uh, calculations which are corresponding to R square of linear regression. These are known as pseudo R square and few of them are listed here. So this pseudo R square by McFadden is calculated as this entity and uh, Deviance, which is equivalent to residual sum of square for a linear model, is defined as this entity. Then, Efron's R square is defined as this. This is McFadden's R square, similar to this. It is again uh, listed here. Then, McFadden's adjusted R square, it is adjusted for the number of parameters. Then, count R square, then adjusted count R square. Then, this is again pseudo R square. This is another performance indicator known as Akaki information criteria. So another way to examine goodness of fit is Akaki information criteria. Like the adjusted R square for OLS, the Akaki information criteria take into account the parsimony of the model by penalizing for number of parameters. So this is the penal term here, 2K. But AIC is useful only in comparative manner, either with the null model or an alternative model. So when we need to compare two models, we use AIC value. It does not purport to describe the percent of variance in Y accounted for as does the pseudo R square. So it is not like pseudo R square. It is a relative measure. Then BIC or Bayesian information criteria is the BIC is like AIC is a relative measure of comparing models. It is given by this. This is the penalizing term. When fitting model, it is possible to increase the likelihood by adding input variables. But doing so may result in overfitting. So we use the penalizing term here. So BIC penalizes model complexity with log of n multiplied by k, whereas AIC penalizes with 2k. Then log likelihood ratio statistics, it is similar to an overall life test in ordinary least square regression as described in my lecture on linear regression to test for the overall null hypothesis that all beta coefficients are equal to zero. So H0 is that two logistic regression models are not significantly different from each other. This is null hypothesis. Then alternate hypothesis is that two logistic regression models are significantly different from each other. So significance is assessed with uh, chi-square distribution where degree of freedom is difference between number of parameters in the two models. So this is first model and this is null model. 
This is the likelihood ratio statistics. Then hosmer lemso test. Here, null hypothesis is that our logistic regression model fits our data well. So it is goodness of fit test. And alternate hypothesis is that our logistic regression model does not fit our data well. So this hosmer lemso test is a statistical test for goodness of fit for logistic regression model. The procedure is that the data is divided into number of groups. For example, 10 groups. Then the observed and expected number of cases in each group is calculated. Then chi-square statistics is used to assess the significance. So the performance matrices can be divided into absolute and relative. Absolute measure includes pseudo R-square. There are various types of pseudo R-square which I have described. And the relative measures include likelihood ratio test, Akaki information criteria, Bayesian information criteria, and residual deviance, which I have described. Then model diagnostics. So it is done to test our assumptions. So these are model diagnostic graphs and techniques. So one is Pearson's residual versus linear predictors. Other is Pearson's residual versus independent variables. Then marginal model plots. Then empirical logit versus covariates. This is the formula for empirical logit. Then to check plausibility of likelihood function, we can use this matrix calculation as one of the covariating model and there should be no improvement after adding this then hat matrix diagonal as described before if it is more than 2p by n or it is if it is more than 3p by n it is significant then sample size consideration sample size consideration there are various publications for recommended sample size and some of these are listed here so sample size should be 100 samples plus 10 multiplied by number of covariates then another rule is event per variable rule there are two rules under this one is 10i it is used for both logistic regression and cox regression as published by these authors another rule is 50i then another rule by these authors is that sample size should be at least 20 observations per covariate then there is rule of 10 that is 10 cases per covariate for least frequent out outcomes so this is important then rule of thumb for clinical studies is at least 500 cases in total. So this is by this author. Then let us see uh, Python code with an example of logistic regression. So this is the uh, set of libraries which are important. So Panda is for data frame manipulation. Then NumPy is for mathematical calculations. Then pipeline function of sklearn pre-processing of sklearn, linear model, and uh, test train split uh, from sklearn. Then these are the performance matrices. Then stats model, variance inflation factor for multicollinearity. Then uh, scipy stats, chi-square library. Then this is these are the libraries for graph plotting. So this is our data, then uh, this is model fitting and these are the predictions. So these are predictions from the train set and these are predictions from the test set. These are predicted Y or outcome and these are predicted probabilities. Similarly, these, this is predicted Y and these are predicted probabilities. So it is for each case. Then this is the, uh, these are the coefficients and they are t-test for significance. So all the coefficients are significant. These are our coefficients. Then uh, this is the interpretation of coefficient. So exponential of coefficient, individual coefficient is the odds ratio. So these are odds ratio of various input variables or covariates then basic calculations this is the calculation of residual deviance it is uh, defined as 2 multiplied by log loss so it is 565 another way to calculate residual deviation deviance is the summation of deviance residuals square the, this i will describe later what are these deviance residuals then this is log likelihood. If we multiplied uh, 
summation of log likelihood by minus 2, then we get residual deviance. So, it is 565 in both the cases. Then model performance measures. These are certain definitions I have taken from internet, of course. This is calculation of full log likelihood. That is log likelihood of full model. This is log likelihood of null model. This is McFadden's R square. This is McFadden's adjusted R square. This is Debian sky square statistics. So it is the difference uh, between full model and null model. And the return is the deviance difference of deviance and p value. So this is the efference R square. And this is McFadden's R square. And this is the p value, which is significant of Debian sky square statistics. Then this is the uh, definition of explained deviance I have taken from internet. And uh, this is hosmer Lamso test. Uh, this also I have taken from internet and this is the output. So chi-square is 10.38 and uh, its p-value is not significant. And uh, these are the calculations for this chi-square. These are the observed values and these are the uh, expected values here. Then this is the calculation for Akaki information criteria. And this is for full model 581. Basin information criteria for full model is 616 as compared to Akaki information criteria, which is lower. So the lower is better. So Bayesian information criteria is more than AIC because it penalizes more. Then this is performance. These are perf inbuilt performance measures of SKL and library. These are the results. Uh, these are performance measures, precision, recall, F1 square and support. This is from SKL and library. Then this is the result of confusion matrix. So diagonal values are more as compared to off diagonal. So our model is performing good. This is ROC analysis of our model. So now model diagnostics, these are some of the plots. This is Pearson's residual uh, versus predicted probabilities. This is the graph of hat values versus predicted probabilities. And uh, few of the hat values are uh, influential here. So these are leverage values. Then uh, these are these are deviance residuals which plotted against uh, the predicted probabilities. And this is test for multicollinearity, that is variance inflation factor. So all of these are less than 5. So there is no problem of multicollinearity in our data. So this is all for today. Thank you very much.